I welcome you to Santa First Baptist Church. And, and those that are watching online, we appreciate you tuning in with us, uh, worshiping from home, uh, just joining in the scene with us. Uh, this morning, uh, before we get started, I'd like to uh, take some prayer requests. Anybody got any spoken prayer requests this morning? This morning we talked about praying for our country, praying for our president, praying for everybody that's dealing with uh, the COVID situation. So y'all be much in prayer. Other churches uh, that we've been made aware of this what this week have been dealing with it. So y'all pray for them. Uh, pray for our first responders, our, our nurses, our uh, doctors, everybody that's uh, again been affected. That's on the front line by that. Uh, continue to pray for our church. Uh, pray for our Senior adults, I know the definitely the ones that are just coming to church and that's the only place they go, you know, be praying for them. Um, and then also the ones, again, that's watching online for various reasons. Uh, Y'all be much of prayer for them. Um, has anybody else got a spoken prayer request? Again, we do appreciate you being here today. Uh, today would have been homecoming, uh, third Sunday in August. Because of everything going on, we're going to uh, be pushing that to next year. Uh, we'll talk more about that later on, but uh, again, it's a, a different different time, but just so you know, it ain't took God by surprise, amen, and we know he's, he's faithful to it all. Uh, does anybody, uh, again, have an unspoken request by raise of hand? Uh, if you will, let's bow our heads and let's go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, again, we're looking forward to God working in our, our midst today. Uh, I believe God's give us a, give us a word for, uh, for, for today. But let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would just be within the service. God, we pray, Lord, that you would please forgive us, Lord, where we've, where we've messed up, where we've sinned. And, and God, I thank you for the 130 years, God, that you've had this church here. Lord, I pray, God, that we would continue being faithful in, in your work. Uh, God, I pray for, for Jesus and, and your son, Lord, just, uh, just the, the promise of salvation. Knowing heaven is our home, God, if we've trusted in him. I pray, God, for all the many requests that's been mentioned, Lord, and I know even the ones that were mentioned earlier today, uh, we pray, God, that you would continue to uh, just work a work within those. God, we pray for healing. We pray for comfort. Uh, God, we pray all the unspoken requests by raise of hand. You know the need of each one. Lord, I pray for this service, God. I pray for anybody on the side of our voice today. Uh, maybe watching online that does not know your son, Jesus, as Lord and Savior. I pray today would be the day they would accept you. God, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. If you would, uh, we're going to sing. Y'all can stay seated on this song, and I'll, I'll show you in a minute why. Uh, but we're going to sing uh, page, page three, or, or, excuse me, 329, if I get the word out there. Uh, but y'all look on the screen. We're going to sing the first and the last. And it's called Grace Greater Than Our Sin. Ain't you glad grace is greater than your sin? Amen. Let's sing it. Sing it out.
song called What a Day, that I do. I know everybody, uh, I sure know the song, just look on the screen. Uh, I don't know about y'all, but I'm looking forward to the day uh, when I do see Jesus' face. And uh, it's, it's amazing to know uh, that one day that's going to happen. I know every time I sing this song, I, I, I remember a story. Uh, Glenn Payne, who sang the cathedrals, the story was, now I didn't witness it, but that before he passed away in his hospital room, uh, that he actually uh, switched to the chorus, Kathy, real quick. The, the chorus, uh, it got to the point to, to the, and he was singing this song on his deathbed. He said, what a day that will be when my Jesus I shall see. And I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. And when he sung, when he takes me by the hand, that's when he went on into eternity. And, and, I, and that's the story that I've been told. Now, uh, I just think that's a, a, a wonderful way to look at it, that he's taking us by the hand on in the board. And, uh, but it's one of those things that uh, I love this song. I want you to stand up, and let's sing it just like you've never sang before. What a day that would be. <laughs> Service in 1890. 
but, uh, but God is uh, blessed, and, and I don't know about y'all, but in this day and age we're living in, uh, there's some things we just need to know. You know, I know there's so many questions out there around us, but we know that God is good, we know He's kind, we know He is so much more uh, than what we're going to leave behind, amen? And, and all the things we're working toward today is all going to be left behind. But, uh, but I want you to sing out, and I'm gonna, I've got my words up here this time. I hope I won't mess up as bad as I did this morning. But, uh, but I want you to sing along. You stay seated, but just let the, the, the words minister to you this morning. Bible's out and turn to Joshua chapter 23. Oh, it's back up? Okay. We're going to work on a computer at some point in time, guys. Here we go. But y'all sing it. Let you hear me when I speak. You don't keep my heart from breaking. When it does, you weep with me. You're so close that I can feel you when I've lost the words to pray. And though my eyes have never seen you, I've seen enough to say. I'll sing along, guys. I know that you are good. Cause even 
lights off. You want to turn the lights on? Uh, if you'll get your Bibles, turn to Joshua chapter 23. Um, you know, I, I know each and every week, um, you know, we try my best, you know, for one thing, to see what God wants us to hear this morning. And also knowing just the, the signs of the time, the things that we're seeing all around us. You know, for us to walk out those doors, if you come here today as a Christian, you walk out those doors with comfort, peace, hope, and, and assurance that no matter what we face, uh, just like that song there, we know that we're loved, we know we're safe, we know we're in God's hands. Now today, if you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, uh, today is the day of salvation for you. If you'll just turn it all over to Him. And, 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 and today... Would have been a 130 year celebration. We're going to do it next year uh, because of COVID and all the things going on around it. We had a, a great day kind of planned. We'll do it next year. Uh, but I know this church was founded in 1890. Uh, this actually was the first pastor of the church. Brother William Patton was his name. Uh, and I'll have it back there in the back. You can see it. Ken Norman. I normally gave you this picture. Uh, not long after I was here, and I kept it in my Bible, and I started thinking, you know, from the first pastor of this church in 1890 to, I said the last pastor earlier, but I'm the, the latest pastor, uh, I got, uh, the, the, the latest pastor uh, being, um, you know, me, to think about 130 years from this man was able to stand behind the pulpit of this church and many other men all through the ages to the day. And, and 130 years. And and I know uh, to think about even this church being built, you know, this church here actually built in 1920, uh, so it's 100 years old. Uh, to think about all the, the windows that you see that, that was put in, it's got names that were represented either in memory or, or they donated the money for that. To think about this church and the history, there's even a picture in the back back there uh, that Becky Altman, uh, she was here in first service, she was actually in that photo uh, around, I guess when she was around 12 or 13 is what Gary had said. Gary spoke up and said this. Uh, and Gary said this too, so I, I don't want to tell anybody's age, but uh, it's about a 60-year-old <laughs> picture there. Uh, but to think about that picture, and, I, and we even talked about maybe next year, at some point in time, planning a day to, to get a picture made with everybody here at the church, kind of uh, mimicking that, uh, kind of the same angle just to compare uh, but it's just great to know uh, of the uh, community and, and this church, what it stood for. But today as we look at Joshua, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to see the last message of Joshua. Uh, the very last message. It was a deathbed message. And, and if we look in uh, Joshua chapter 24, we'll read a few verses here. We're going to be kind of going back and forth between 23 and 24. And if you got your Bibles, I mean, uh, open it up, and, and even on your phones or uh, whatever you may be reading the Bible with, but uh, we're going to really see what his message was. And, and through this, uh, Joshua, just to kind of give you a little background, he was the leader uh, of Israel, and, and he was there for 40 years, uh, there in the land of promise. Joshua was in his old age. He was... Uh, and in his old age, he was gathering the leadership of Israel together. Uh, and then what he was doing was sharing with them things that are most important for them to hear. Now, chapter 24 and chapter 23, uh, we see that he speaks to Israel. He speaks to the leaders. And we'll see that a little, a little later. But what this is is a deathbed message. Uh, I don't know about y'all, but I, I've experienced loved ones. I've experienced people that are right on the verge of eternity, leading this walk of life. They've never talked to me about wishing I had more money. I wish, Wayne, you ever make more money. You ever do this, you ever do that. You know, Wayne, I wish you would have been Larry Bird. You know, I wish you'd have been at various point guard you always wanted to be. And that kind of, you know, I'm just, I'm just making a joke there. But I've never, they've never sit there and, and, and ever talked to me about, you know, I wish you had a bigger house. I wish that, you know, you did this or you did that. The thing they've always talked to me about is salvation. You know, ready to go to heaven. You know, ready. And that's, that's the only thing you're going to take with you. And, and we saw deathbed messages, not only Joshua here, but we saw it with Jacob. We saw it with Moses. 
Uh, and, and what they do is they're sitting here telling them, you know, exactly, you know, what is important to them. And, and I started thinking about in the pews, uh, which I think they were, these pews here were bought, I think, in 1922 is what it said here. But I started thinking about these pews and if these pews could talk. You know, if the, if the walls could talk and, and all the meetings that's, that's took place over all the years, you know, what would they say? And, and I started thinking about this too because being 130 years later, even from that picture being 60 years later, what would they say about today to us? Would they be proud of where we're at? Would they be proud? And, and I started thinking about all the things, and y'all been here a lot longer than I have, and, and some of you may be shorter than myself, but me and Shelly's been here four, going on five years, and, and uh, we just thought about it this morning, that how, how time flies when you're having fun. I'm telling you, this, this is just a blessing to be here, but to, to think about all the things that, maybe we've experienced over 130 years that I've even seen within four and five years, just to be honest with you. I thought about all the laughter. You know, we've had a lot of fun. I mean, we've had times of, of laughing. We've also seen pain, have we not? Amen. We've, been, we've seen pain. We've seen births over 130 years, I'm sure. We've seen deaths. We have also seen trials and, and tribulations. All of us, on the sound of my voice, have experienced that in some way, form, or fashion. We've also experienced mountaintop experiences, have we not? I mean, just what God has done. There was a point in time in Awana, one year, one year, I mean, just to give you, for instance, just a mountaintop experience. They would think it was four or five weeks in a row that a soul got saved. And five weeks in a row, somebody got baptized. Ain't that just a blessing to know that? I know, you know, that what God is doing, it's what God is doing. But we've experienced the highs, and, and, I, and I know we've just experienced four or five years. Some of y'all even shorter than that. Some of you have been here longer. Becky, I think, has been here the longest, you know, that was alive. Uh, as far you know, she's been a member here for the longest time. But think about the highs and the lows that we've been through. Think about your Christian walk, the highs and the lows that you've been through. Uh, and, but we could go on and on and talk about that. And, and, and I started thinking about this. What the church would say to us, what this pastor would say to us in 1890, to us in 1920, or 1920, 2020, golly, I'm going to go back 100 years here. Uh, what he'd say to us 130 years later. But also, if the Lord tarries his coming, I believe it could happen any moment. I believe this COVID outbreak may be a wake up call from God, just to be honest with you. Who, who's true followers, who's committed to the cause. But to think about if the Lord tarries his coming, which I believe the rapture can take place today, it could take place before we finish this service today. I believe it. I believe that's the next event in God's timetable. But if the Lord tarries his coming, what would you say to the future generations 130 years from now? And y'all can say, what would y'all what would y'all tell them? Y'all speak of whatever the God's laid on your heart. What would you tell the church, if the Lord Terry was coming 130 years from now, there's somebody here preaching to a congregation. What would you tell them? Trust Jesus. Trust Jesus. Be saved, he said. Be saved. Trust Jesus. Anybody else? Keep the faith. Keep the faith. Don't take coming to church for granted. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? What you would tell the church in 130 years, after we're long gone. Stand on your faith. Stand on your faith. That's right. Anybody else? Commitment. Commitment. Amen. Anyone else? I mean, ain't no right or wrong answers if it's in God, in God's Word. But I thought about this, about the, the legacy. You know, we've talked about, you know, Brother William Patton here. Even myself. That is where our legacy can be attributed. It's got to be Jesus. That, that's our legacy to leave behind. And if we leave this walk of life 130 years from now, that they can look back and maybe that picture we take at some point in time, 60 years later, to say they, they trusted Jesus. They believed in Him. That, that's the only legacy that's going to make a difference. You know what I would say to 130 years? If you're lost, 
hey, get saved. If you, you know, be faithful. If you are saved, be faithful. Be committed, just like Brother Johnny said. Uh, stay the course. Stay the course. And I know it's hard for us to see right now, but it's going to be worth it. It's going to be worth it. Just, just hang in there. The last public speech we see of Joshua here, he was a great general in, in the nation of Israel. Uh, it was of a, a great importance, and it was also sound advice. And had it been heeded later on in the life of this nation, it would have spared much heartache, sorrow, and defeat. But we, if you, I, mean, I haven't read any scripture yet, I'm sorry. Uh, Joshua, chapter 24. I'll tell you what, just go, go to 23. We'll do it this way. Joshua 23. Because what Joshua does right off the bat is he reminds them of past blessings. And again, remember, this is a deathbed message of Joshua. He's a general of the, of the nation of Israel. It says, And it came to pass a long time after the Lord had given rest unto Israel from all their enemies round about that Joshua waxed old and stripped in age. And Joshua called for all Israel and for their elders and for their heads, for their judges and for their officers and said unto them, I am old and stricken in age. So he's gathered them all together here now. It says in verse 3, it says, And ye have seen all, all that the Lord your God hath done unto all these nations because of you. For the Lord your God is he that hath fought for you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. God, I pray that you would be within this message, God, how we find a cross. I pray you speak to, through me. Uh, God, just give me the word. This is the last message I ever preached, God, and be faithful to you, Lord. Thank you for your blessings. I pray, God, that help us today to heed the message that Joshua has for us, Lord. And God, we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. And every time I read that scripture there, I'm always reminded of Moses back in Exodus chapter 14, verse 14, where he, where he will say it here, Now the Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. Now a lot of times we, we, we see as we fight battles, we want to kind of pick it up ourselves and go about it, but it says here to, to just wait on God. And, and, and he, but, but Joshua here, when he talks about that the Lord God is he that had fought for you, he reminds them uh, that it has been God who fought their battles and gave them the victory. And that's the battles that we have won here over the years. It's been through the, the victories that God has given us and God has done. But if you look at verse 9, uh, it goes on to say, For the Lord hath driven out from before you great nations and strong, but as for you, no man hath been able to stand before you unto this day. We even see in, in 24, 11 through 13, it goes on to say, And you went over Jordan and came unto Jericho, and the men of Jericho fought against you, the Amorites, the Perizzites, and the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Ger Gergeshites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. And I delivered them into your hand. And I sent the hornet before you, which drave them out from before you, even the two kings of the Amorites, but not with my sword, nor with my bow. And I have given you a land for which you did not labor, and cities which you build not, and you dwell in them, but the vineyards and olive yards which you planted not, do ye eat. So we, he's reminding them of past blessings. Now the church, Christians, those that know Jesus Christ, as Lord and Savior, <clears throat> we need to stop and think about our past blessings. You know, we were lost. Were we not? We were lost. Undone without God, we were lost. We were dead in trespasses and sin. But He quickened us. He made us alive only through Him. We, we were lost. We were also on the road to hell without power to change our course. Amen? We were on the road to hell. But Christ, in 1 Peter chapter 2, 24, Christ came to die for our sins on the cross, and He saved us. 1 Peter 2 24 says, Who his own self 
bear our sins in his own body on the tree. Think about the worst sins that you've ever committed. And just to be honest with you, is there times in your life where you sit there and maybe something comes to mind of, of something you messed up and sinned and God's forgiven it, but it kind of hits you like, oh man, I forgot about that. You know, I kind of put that back in my mind. But to think about all the sin, all the things that, that, that Wayne Page has done, that you have done, it says there, who his own self, Jesus, bear our sins in his own body on the tree. That we, being dead to sins, should live under righteousness by whose stripe you were healed. By whose stripes. To think about Jesus did that for me and for you. And, and we'll go on and read in, in 1 Peter 3 and 18. It says, For Christ also hath once suffered for sin, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. And that quickened there means to be made alive by the Spirit. That Holy Spirit makes you alive. And I'll be honest with you guys when we were reminded of the past blessings. And this is the honest truth. Sometimes we forget where we come from. We may as a Christian be enlightened. We may have accepted Christ as our Savior. We see the other person better than I do. We see the other person beside us may be lost. So hang on just one second. I was going to say talk about yourself, but better not. This is the point I want us to make. I mean, it's an important point. Christians need to stop, think of our past blessings. We were lost, undone. We were on the road to hell without no chance to, to change our course. Christ died, saved us from our sins, and saved us. And the point I was making was a lot of times we may see somebody lost. And I, I love it. I've got text messages from, from church members that Hey, pray for so-and-so, they're lost. Pray for this person, they're lost. I love that. It makes me know you care about your friends or, or loved ones. But a lot of times we think, well, why, why can't they just accept Christ? Why can't they just turn it all over to, to God? I think a lot of times, and I've seen it time and time again, and I know everybody that's been visiting and going door to door, all of, all of y'all have been. I'm going to try to... to uh, name people, but you know, we go out and, and I know some of y'all and Shelly can attest to this. We've knocked on doors to where one thing that was kind of keeping them out is because they was hurt by an old church or a church member. Something that went on in their life. And and that's kind of the reason behind that. And, and the thing about it is I think us as Christians, we've got to get over the fact that uh, everybody ain't exactly, you know, made that decision like us. We, we lose that compassion, but we forget where we come from. And, and all of us that are Christians here today were lost. Amen? I was lost. And I had to make that decision for myself. But again, as God is reminding us of past blessings as a Christian, let's not forget where we come from. And even if you're talking to folks and, and, and ministering to folks that don't know Christ, you know, don't give up. Because I think you can share just about fear. It mentions that about seven encounters is the average before they say, you don't know, you may be the first, you may be the seventh, you may even be the tenth. But it's great to, to know how God can, can work through us if we'll allow him to. But again, my thing is, don't forget where we come from. Also, Joshua goes on and reminds them of future blessings that he promised. 
Now God shall deliver them from his enemies. We see in, in, in verse 5 of chapter 23, he says, The Lord your God, he shall expel them from before you and drive them from out of your side. He shall possess their land as the Lord your God had promised you. Church, God has promised us victory over our enemies as a Christian. He's given us the promise over Satan. Amen. Ain't you glad there's going to be a day that we're going to, he's going to be cast in hell. He's going to be cast in the lake of fire forever and ever. Not only that, but we see it in 1 John 4 and 4, and I think this is an important message for today. Because we see everything going on around us, it makes us anxious, it makes us wonder, you know, the whole plan of it all. But God sees it all. But in 1 John 4 and 4, it says, You are of God, little children, and I've overcome them because, look what it says here, because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater is, is God, greater is him that's in you than he that is in the world. So we're one day after a while, we're going to have victory over the world. Can you say amen? Amen. 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 I, I'm looking forward to that day. Also over self and sin because our self, we're filled with sin. So what? no matter what we face, no matter what we face, we walk out that door. One thing we can all say is God is faithful. Amen. Our God, our faith to God, he, he's faithful. He's got it under control. And if you don't have, and if we're thinking about the future, if you don't have that assurance, hey, come to Jesus. You know how I know he can save you? It's because he saved me. Amen. We're actually saved, and it's only through him. We also see that, that Joshua reminds them of their responsibility. He tells them to put away the strange gods and turn to God with all their hearts. In verse 7 of, of Jeremiah chapter 23, he says, That you come not among these nations, these that remain among you, neither make mention of the name of their gods, nor cause to swear by them, neither serve them nor bow yourselves unto them. Church, idolatry is still uh, here around us. And, and idolatry in a so-called Christian land today takes two forms. One of those forms is materialism. Hobbies. Those type of things. I mean, we, putting anything ahead of God is, is an idol. Y'all with me so far? Not only that, and I'll say this, maybe here this morning, you may be watching online, but, you know, one of the things that also, is as a, as a case of idolatry, is just playing church. Pretending to be right with God. And, and it's important for us to inventory, look at our life. Now, we've had a lot of people walk through those doors. I'm sure over 130 years, there's been a lot of people saved in this, in this altar here. But the main thing is, just because your name's on the road, just because you've talked to the pastor and that, the main thing is that you know, that you know, that you know that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. And, and, and that's the thing about it, too. When you come and sit on a pew, and I've done it, too, guys. I mean, I, I'm speaking from experience. Coming in, sitting on a pew, pretending to be right with God, pretending to be where I need to be, knowing all along, you know, I wasn't where I needed to be or I wasn't doing things exactly right. And, and what we see from this is that God already knows it. God sees it. And you may can fool me, that, I'm, 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 a pastor. I'm not God. I, I'm not, I can't see everything that you do. You make it fool me. But one thing you can't do, you can't fool God. Amen. Amen. Can't fool God. You've got to, don't play church. Don't play it. It's a one-on-one -on -one -on -one relationship with Jesus Christ. It's, if, if, if this world goes completely crazy and, and it's just you by yourself with your Bible in your own, that, that God can speak with you. It's that relationship. That's the only thing that's going to get you or myself through these difficult days, these difficult situations. But to be able to, to the responsibility that Joshua is talking about here, for one is to obey the word of God. In Jeremiah 23 and 6, he says, Be therefore very courageous, to keep and do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses, that you turn not aside therefrom to the right hand or to the left. That means go straight. 
Amen. Go straight. Obey the word of God. And, and, and this is the way, the truth, and the life. We, we've got to trust in Jesus. Also, to be de totally devoted to the Lord. Now, verse 8 through 11 in Jeremiah chapter 23, it says, but Cleave unto the Lord your God, as you have done unto this day. For the Lord hath driven out from before you great nations and strong, but as for you, no man hath been able to stand before you unto this day. Now, before we read verse 10, just so you know, if it's just you and God against the world, you're still in a majority. But we see in verse 10, notice what it says here. One man of you shall chase a thousand. Ain't that something when you think about one person, one man, shall be able to chase a thousand. And, and notice why. It says, for the Lord your God, he it is that fighteth for you as he has promised you. Take good heed, therefore, unto the, yourselves that ye you love the Lord your God. And that's my prayer for y'all as well. You just love God. He loves you. And, 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 that, and, and that's our responsibility is to be devoted, to be committed to what God would call us to do. And, and, and I know each one of these you can preach a sermon within itself. But Joshua here is reminding them of their responsibility. And we have a responsibility as well. Also, he warns them of the danger of disregard. If you read 15 and 16, God... Uh, <clears throat> Says in verse 15, says later on, says, Shall the Lord bring upon you all evil things until he have destroyed you from off the good land which the Lord your God has given you? When ye have transgressed the covenant of the Lord your God, which he commanded you, and have gone to serve other gods, and bow yourself to them, then shall the anger of the Lord be kindled against you, and ye shall perish quickly from off the good land which he had given unto you. And, and we see that God, uh, he warned them, he told them that. that mentioned about disaster if they failed to keep his, his covenant. Uh, church, we cannot keep disregarding God and his work and expect his blessings. And it doesn't matter who you are today. I know in, in this day and age God is no respecter of person. It doesn't matter black or white. It doesn't matter rich or poor. God is no respecter a person. We're all going to stand before God one day after a while. But the attitude of the day is one of rebellion. I'll just do as I please. I'll just do as I please. But if a man, if a woman is saved, he belongs to God and is expected to do his will. I would not have imagined, and Ms. Shelley even talked about it this morning, all the difficulties I've been through, all the trials I've been through, all the tribulations I've been through, and I know it's nothing compared to what a lot of y'all been through, but that God would bring me to a point where I'd be able to pastor a church such as this. And it's a loving, caring church. I know we ain't perfect, but I know we serve a perfect Savior. Wouldn't you say that, Dave? Yeah. And we just, we love it, and we appreciate y'all. And I'm telling you, y'all are blessing us. But, I started thinking about it's my job to be the man of God in my home. Your job to be a man in your home. We can't get just in an hour or two on a Sunday. We've got to start in the home. And I started thinking about every window that's represented by name. Think about their life. Will it be in every person that's walked through that door in 130 years? And, and that's the thing. They could walk through that door and, and uh, maybe walked out lost and undone or didn't set to Christ. But the main thing, and I know we've talked about the church a lot, but the main thing is, is walking through the door of salvation. You've got to know Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior. It doesn't matter if you know me. It doesn't matter if your name's on the town of First Baptist Church Road. Every, you can be baptized in every creek and, and in Baxter and in Walker County. Alabama, all over the world, but if you do not have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then we're lost. But it's your choice. And, and Joshua 24, 14 through 15, he tells them, 
says, Now therefore fear the Lord, serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood, or the gods of the Amorites. Notice those are little g's there, little, little gods, in whose land you dwell. Notice it says here, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So today it's your choice. Joshua tells them to choose who you will serve. Not if you will serve, that you will serve. It, it, it was his choice, and it should be our choice as well. And, and he was charged with responsibility for the nation of Israel, but the main thing was his own house was to serve God. And, and even as a church, you know, we, we've got a responsibility here to serve God. That people, when they see us, that they see Jesus and what Jesus can do. I'm telling you, and, I, and I've said this maybe a few weeks back, it ain't programs, it ain't all these extra things that we see all over America. I know here lately with COVID, it's been more just preaching God's word, kind of the way it used to be probably in 19, 18, 20, or 18 to 90. But to think about 130 years ago from now, you know what really speaks to a community? You know what speaks to your co-workers? You know what speaks to your friends, uh, your county? Is when people walk in the walls and they leave out that door changed. And they can see a change in them. When somebody comes in here messed up, and they walk out those doors in a sound mind. Amen? Why? Because God took hold of their life. Jesus Christ made a difference. That's what speaks to the community. That's what speaks to, to, the, to the world. When people walk in that door, I pray they feel the love of God like you've never felt before, the Holy Spirit. Y'all know we prayed, even had, had hands on the doors before and that kind of thing. Pray that when people walk through, I pray when people drive by 102, 124, they just feel the presence of the Holy Spirit drawing them. That's my prayer. Can, can y'all think God, God can do it, can you not? God can do it. And, and we see through this choice to serve God. Who do you choose? Are you choosing God or are you choosing the world and ultimately Satan? And, and also think about this. 130 years ago today, I asked you earlier, if the Lord tarries is coming, what would you say 130 years from now to, to the future church? 130 years from now, what's going to matter in your life? What's going to matter? Jesus. Keep your relationship with Jesus. Heaven or hell, right? You're with me? That's all things going to matter. I know a lot of times we stop there in verse 15. But I want you to look at verse 24. 23 and 24 with me. And if not, listen. It's an important verse. Joshua's given his deathbed message. He's told them that between, you know, as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. But verse 23, it says, Now therefore, put away said he, the strange gods which are among you, and incline your heart unto the Lord God of Israel. And notice in verse 24, if y'all don't get anything out of this, this is important for us today. And the people said unto Joshua, the Lord our God will we serve, and his voice we will obey. If we would do that right there, serve the Lord, and obey his voice, don't you think this would be a better church? Don't you be a better Christian? Amen? Amen. His voice. His voice. His voice. I'm going to close with this. We're going to show a video for an invitation. But this, I, I, y'all know sometimes things hit me kind of differently, and I just thought about this late last night. It just kind of hit me this morning. With all the COVID going on, my bank I work at, they they actually, there's a drugstore there close by. Some of y'all in, in, in the doctor's field, y'all may have heard about it. It's called an immunity pack is what it's called. And it has different vitamins. Take them daily. And it's supposed to help you 
uh, be able to combat COVID. And I, I don't know, when, and that's the thing about it, you can take them and still, I'm sure, not be uh, completely immune to, to the disease or uh, to, the, to the COVID uh, flu, or whatever it's called. Uh, but to think about immune, immunity. If you take that immunity pack, you have a better chance of beating it, but you still could get it. But immunity, when you think about that word, I thought about this. The, the, actually, the, the definition of it means protection or exemption from something, especially an obligation or a penalty. Now, the wages of sin is what? Death. Death. But the gift of God is the eternal life through who? Jesus Christ our Lord. So today, when we think about having immunity, that I deserved hell. I can't speak to you. I know I did. But there was a point in time where I had to make the choice to accept Jesus. And in that point, it's, it's heaven or hell. It's one of the two. His ultimate destination. So, even though I can't be completely protected from the virus, to think about accepting Jesus as my Savior, how His blood his blood cleanses us from all sin. Now going back to the scripture that I read earlier in 1 Peter 2 and 24, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead into sin should live under righteousness by whose stripes you are healed. His blood cleanses us from all sin. And what's great about it too, is, is we don't have to guess the heavens are home. We can know what I shallow doubt the heavens are home. I know. I know. It ain't because my name is Wayne Faith. It's because I trust that Jesus is my Savior. You can know too. There's not no hope so, maybe so. It's a no so salvation. I want you to bow your heads and let's go to the Lord in prayer. Now, I just want to ask you, nobody looking on. Nobody looking on. But do you know that Jesus is your Savior without a shadow of doubt? You just raise your hand. Be proud of it. Amen. God bless. God bless those hands. God bless. Lord, we come to you today. Lord, I pray if anybody was not able to raise their hand, God, I pray that you would give them the courage to step forward. Accept your Son, Jesus, as Savior. God, we love you and thank you. It's your invitation time. I pray that you'd speak through us. Speak to us, God. Help us. Whatever you're calling us to do, help us listen to that small still voice. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. As she keep your heads bowed, she plays this song. It's called The Cross it Has a Final Word. Uh, just let it speak to your heart, too. It's got a wonderful message. If you got a need, please.